the most truly selfish people we can be are actually simultaneously being the most selfless. The really healthy ego is part and parcel with that caring for that which we love the most, including ourselves. I like your t-shirt today, uh, Mr. Holiday. A little Iron Maiden Thursday. <laughs> Come on. Come on. The best, the best. I'm still I, I, looking for good rock and roll out in the world, my friend. Everything I learned about the uh, the entertainment business, I learned from from watching Iron Maiden. That's my that's my secret. Ah, lead pipe scent. Don't make <laughs> don't make a straight line crooked. No. Um, so look, I want to start kind of at the end in the sense of you had a little uh, experience on an airplane recently. Yeah. Uh, what flashes through your mind when the thing you're taking for granted, which is getting safely from point A to point B, uh, suddenly uh, changes? Um, first thing, let me get an eye line on the flight attendant. Yeah. Because I know they're trained to look calm and sure together. And I've hit turbulence before where I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. But then you look at the flight attendant and like, and you kind of measure and you're looking for their, their sort of their indirect wink, like it's okay. Or, oh yeah. shit. Right. Yes. Well, there was no, 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 there was no wink. Everyone was like, and the flight attendants were somewhere, you know, down getting themselves back up together. And we're really scared. You saw the fear in their eyes. Um, um, I, Immediately, without thinking about it, put a hand out to my wife Camilla and held her. We 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 held each other here, my left arm, her right. You kind of hold your breath. Some people were laughing, <laughs> and it was the ner- It was almost a nervous sort of shock laughter. Right. Is what I understood afterwards. Um, and when it happened. There was no, I don't believe there was no, there was no seatbelt warning prequel. There was no warning before it happened. Mm. I'm lucky I had the, Camille and I both had our, our, our dinner trade tables over our waist. And when we went up, that's, that was the hinge that, that held my, down. my feet went up and my torso went up. And that was the hinge that held me at my waist. And then I remember looking up and seeing <laughs> there, was a, there was a glass of red wine, just, just floating in this beautiful shape in the air, standing still. And I was an in inception for a second. All these plates and everything just slowed down to, you know, about, about 300 frames a, 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 a second. And all of a sudden it just floated one, two, three, four, wham! And on the slam downs when everything just gravity came and everything dropped. And it was a lot of those, you could hear a lot of steel on steel. A lot of those, uh, they had just gotten the service carts out, which weigh a lot. And, yeah. and, and when those came down behind us, you had heard some, then you started to hear a little bit of some screaming. Um, uh, again, look at those flight attendants. What's the look on their face? Another, another, like the third, I guess the third in charge of if one of the pilots went out, came out and he was very discombobulated. Um, that's when I knew it was serious. Then it was, oh, geez, our friends tell us all the time that, if you can fly separate as a husband and wife, if you can, yes. and we had that deal. Yes. And I was like, you know, maybe I was like that. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> let's, yeah. let's see if there's another one coming. Let's see if there's another hit coming. Um, I didn't start to go down a list of, of like prayers. It was more deal with the deal with the immediate moment. What, 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 what do I got? I didn't go like say hell Mary's or anything like that. Like this is the sure. end. So now let me, you know, what I say on the way down. It wasn't that. Oh, look, I was fortunate. I had a friend, Matthew O'Hare, riding to the right of me with a pilot, and he had the radar on his iPhone. It was like, yeah, we're just on the left edge of this thing. I don't know why we didn't get further left. We got to get off the berm of this this storm. It's right here. And we're still not out away from it. And right about then, bam, another one hit. Um, now the seatbelts are on, so it was a little more secure. Um, and then... You know, being a beginner, intermediate engineer, my question is, is there structural damage to this plane? Because that was as big of a jolt by Mother Mm -hmm. Nature as I've ever felt on a piece of steel flying through the air. And enough where I was like, I don't know what could withstand, at least not being bent, you know, in my mind. 
And he goes, oh, no, no, don't worry about, don't worry about that. that the, 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 these planes are tested to such a great strength that, they, that there's no structural damage. I was like, okay. And then things, the dust settles. We see on the radar that we're out away from the storm. Some of that laughter I heard in the back turns to tears and moaning and crying. Uh, people start to tend to their wounds, kind of come out of the shock. To use, People start sure. to measure, how am I really injured? And there were quite a few injuries. And then... It, very, it, and this is all everything I've just said in the last three minutes goes through my mind in about the first 20 seconds. Yeah. Because after, after 20 seconds, I then got pissed off. I yeah, then you got told me that. I then got immediately mad and was cussing and going, man. And, 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 I, and I got another pilot to my right with the radar going, we could have, we could have just headed off sure. west and taken 10 more minutes and, 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 and missed it. But we did. And so now I'm like, that was, that was avoidable. Mm. Why? What, what the hell? So now I'm yeah. pissed off. Um, and around the time I'm getting pissed off, I'm settling back down. There's no, obviously, no more service. Everyone's just trying to clean up, clean up broken right. glass and, and tend to people. All of a sudden, they go, "We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to." We thought we were gonna make it to New York, which was not the ultimate destination, but instead we had to cut back, uh, back to Washington Dulles. And then you land, and there's seven ambulances on the ground, and it was a lot worse behind us in the middle of the plane. Um, but I, I, fear, oh my gosh, complete no control. This could be it. Let me hold the one I love to the, to the left of me. Yes, if this is it, it's been written. We, I love you. Here we go. I got you. Wait a minute. This is bullshit. <laughs> you know, it cut, that's the, it kind of went yeah. into the, that. That was it. That was about the real time emotions. Yeah. Does, do you, so there's a moment of acceptance where you're like, I'm just a passenger on this plane. Uh, if it goes, it goes. Yeah. There's a moment of, I mean, look, I've said that about planes before and why I, I'm not nervous flying, why I'm still not nervous. And I've flown since and why I'm not nervous. I'm just like, dude, I know that if, some, if the shit does hit the fan, I'm not next in line as the best pilot. Yeah. So therefore I don't, I'm out of control. Therefore I'm going to relax. Now, yeah. if I was a decent pilot, I'd probably be a lot more nervous on planes for thinking at a moment like that, oh, am I up? <laughs> so yes. It's time to put me in, coach. Now, yeah. now I've got a reason to have some nerves. But no, there's a moment when that happened and I'm like, yeah, seat belt, no seat belt. The, the, you know, the, the, I'm not, if this crashes, you, know, you don't hear many where you go, well, the ones with the seat belt survived in the plane crash. Yeah. <laughs> Less injuries in the cabin for sure. But yeah. this is one of those like, oh, if this, if this, if, if, if this goes down, let's just, I immediately, my mind immediately goes, was this written? Yes. Was this written or is this random? And I, I pretty much go quickly into, with that situation, I had a moment of, oh, this, okay, this was written. This was the narrative of my life. This is it. This is the narrative of everyone in here's life. It could be, if this is what happened, if we go down, Okay. Um, and then, you know, within that 30 seconds, I didn't go back and deconstruct 53 years of, Oh, did I do this? What would I do different? Oh my God. It wasn't a, it wasn't a deathbed deal. Like what do I yeah. regret? And what, if, no, it was just like, Whoa, this could be an abrupt exit. This is completely out of my control. What will happen is going to deem what happens to me and everyone else on this planet. Yeah. And we may be exiting this life. That, 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 that understanding did go through head and body. It's an interesting metaphor. There's a line in towards the end of meditations, which Marcus Rios is probably writing as he's getting close to death. He goes, look, the curtain's coming down. And he goes, but wait, wait, wait. And he goes, Hey man, this play's only got three acts. Like uh, that's it for you. Um, and, and there is something about that. I think uh, where you can go, Hey, it was a pretty good script. I had a good part. You know, I played the shit right. out of my part. Uh, if you can't, maybe something different flashes through your mind in one of those moments. Yeah. I, I wonder, cause it's not a, it's not a, you know, like we're, the circumstance we're talking about very different than someone fading out. Yeah, sure. The last 10 years or knowing the curtain is being called on their death. And there's a lot of room for, for deconstructing where you've been and memory to catch up and judgment. And a lot of people find, faith in those last years where maybe they didn't have it before and my circumstances, obviously there's no time for 
sure. that kind of abrupt realization. There's no time to go back and like do the grade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, there's no time to go. It would have been very arrogant to say, "Oh, you know what? I regret, honey." <laughs> it would have been yeah. Like, no, dude. Let's. It was. It, Keep it, to it was still a bit of that. You know, hey, quit praying. Get get your ass yeah. up. Well, let's run from the tornado. It was like, what do we yeah. do? What sure. can we do? I got you. I'm holding the hand. Uh, it, it, it wasn't much time to get objective about the situation. For me. Sure. Yeah. Sure. How how quickly you, you land on the ground, you got all your arms and legs, fingers and toes. Uh, it's the least bad version of what could have happened. Mm-hmm. Do you have a moment of gratitude or does the anger prevent the gratitude? Do you, do you feel like a second lease or no? Yeah, right, 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 right. Well, I'm, I'm sort of uh, parlaying gratitude and, ang- and I'm still pissed. I'm still yeah. going. Not, not, not pissed at the inconvenience that our whole trips and plans are thrown off and we had to land. We're going to go figure out where we're going to. Da- da- just like, damn it, that was freaking unavoidable. So I start going through stereotypical scenarios that are be, you know, in my own head about why would, why would someone do that? And I go back and I remember before we took off, the pilot coming on going, sorry, we're leaving 15 minutes late. I'll try and make as much time up as we can get to it. And I'm like, ah, are, these, are they running on a protocol? They're running on a time. Did the pilot know it was avoidable and said, no, I'll just skirt the, the left berm of the, uh, instead of losing 10 more minutes and getting clear away from it. I don't know. You go through these sure. stairs, but I'm just pissed because it was unavoidable. And I'm pissed mm. because my buddy's holding the radar, who's a pilot next to me going, we're damn close to this thing before yeah. it happens. Uh. Um, so I'm mad. And then I'm like, look, Camille and I sat there at the end of the night when we, in our, in, when we got that little room in the motel and put a little food in our belly and took a few deep breaths, caught, make, you know, called the kids and had a little... Didn't say, oh, my God, how are y'all? Didn't overdo it and exaggerate and get sentimental. But we, we, we were like, boy, mom and I, my, your mother and I just had, a, had, a, had a, a, an event happen tonight that, 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 mm. that, that shook us to the core. We are playing almost in there. Like, we saw that on the news. Y'all were on that. Was, yeah, that was, uh, yeah. And then we went to them. And I think through, ta- through teaching them and reminding them, let's make, you know, did you know what came? You know what did come through my head? The old, and it's been said a million times. The old, hey, when you say goodbye, make sure you say I love you. Yes, that did go through my head, and I remember the next week, uh, uh, one of our children w- was going to school, and he was in a grumpy mood, and we didn't get the, the we didn't get the hug goodbye and the I love you, and the he didn't say the I love you back. Mm. And it was, it, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was it, you know, some people out there might be going, oh, that's the after school special. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Slowing your food. It's great. Sure. It, it really went, it really went through my, it really went through my head to go, oh, watch leaving on a bad note. If it's just a mood you're in with people that you give a damn about and you love, you know, cause you really don't, you don't know. And the last, that, that, that exit, that last moment will, 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 some people I've heard will, you know regret that the ones that 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 live on the on the on this on on the side of losing someone where it didn't end up they regret that that last moment was that every time could be the last time yeah now you know again not to get sentimental on it it's it's just fact every time could be the last time at the same time i'm not really interested in you can get you can get you can become hypo sure on in that, if that's, if that's a word, you can become really kind of paranoid and kind of hovering and cocoon yourself and your loved ones for that. And kind of all of a sudden, you know, you don't want to go out. There. I've seen, I've seen people do sure. it. You don't want to go out the door in the morning for yeah. fear of uh, this could be the last. Yeah. Uh, sure. Uh, you know, or, or no, 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 no. Don't go out there. And you see, you see children get sheltered. Sure. And not have experiences because they never skin their knee or, or, or break, you know, get a bruise or, what have you to go out and figure it out on their own or come home scared, you know? Yeah. Um, but it's true. Yeah. Every time to risk. Yeah. Especially I think coming out of COVID where you had all this time where you kept your kids very, very close. I know I did the acceptance of bringing risk back into your life, right? Cause every time you get in a plane, every time you get in a car, every time you do anything, there's a risk and you can't live your life that way. But I, I do think you have to 
because it could happen. It doesn't mean you shouldn't do things, but you probably shouldn't leave any loose ends untied. Are the risks higher? Because they sure feel like it. Or are we just sort of coming out with virgin wings again, engaging with risk, and it feels brand new, and it feels exaggerated again? I mean, it, do, it, it does feel like... Look, I, I, I certainly think a media environment where you can see real-time images of every horrible thing that's happening anywhere in the world uh, exacerbates or, or, or perhaps brings to the forefront risks that maybe otherwise you wouldn't be considering. But, you know, there's a war raging in Europe. Uh, you know, there's a great power struggle between the U.S. and China. Uh uh, we live in a country flooded with assault rifles. We're just coming out of uh, a pandemic. Uh, sh- yeah, life's scary, stuff, man. Life's that, scary. The, that should be that stuff's on the scoreboard for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you can't you can't let that paralyze you. But it should the reality of those things. I think or lesson from you know what you went through is yeah. Uh, don't don't uh, don't leave things hanging. Don't leave things undone. Don't put things off to the future. Right. Uh, take take the opportunities while you have them because you never know. Yeah, and you know why you things become you you things like that like that event you what what happens on the thing you it does sober you up in a in a way in sure. a way more sober than you maybe were before and sure. you do think because it becomes directly personal and yes. you look around you and the things you love and care about are in eight K. Yes. Or maybe they were they were just you know they they, they were they were HD before. I mean it it, it becomes mm-hmm. whoa it becomes more personal and you and you uh, um, you do care you do care for it more. It has more meaning. You have more gratitude for. It, I, I the- saw I saw this thing. This guy was sitting in his living room, and uh, stray bullet comes through the window, buries in a book behind his head. Actually, in uh, Tim Ferriss's Tools for Titans, I think, just right behind his head, just sitting there. Bullet gets buried, you know, misses him by a couple inches. He's not in a war zone. He's in his freaking house. And so on the one hand, like you said, you're angry at things that are totally senseless, preventable, uh, didn't need to happen. Right. At the same time, I got to think you get up off the couch after that happens and you go, I I got a second chance. I I was spared. How am I going to use mm. this gift that you know maybe somebody was looking out for me or the uh, you know the odds were in my favor or one of my nine lives is still with me. How yeah. how am I going to spend that? To me that's the that's the question you take from those kind of those scrapes yeah. and near misses. Yeah, and how quickly and how and how, and how long for how long and how much is that just a new year's resolution that by february we've forgotten yes yes um and how much does it go no it's opened up a truer more glorious and beautiful perspective that is real yeah. that is real that i'm going to make sure i remember when the lines get fuzzy again when everything seems like easy street and I've got nothing to defend and it doesn't seem so personal and life's just a song. Yeah. Right. It does. It does fade quickly. Uh, it does fade very quickly. You get the reminder of memento mori, that life is short, that you're not in control, that you're a passenger. Someone could write you out of the play at any moment, but then our sort of natural ego and self-centeredness and comfort it creeps back in pretty fast. Yeah, I mean, you know, you and I've talked about it. I'm, I'm working on defining and understanding and believing and trying to communicate that I think that that when we do have that sobriety we're talking about, hmm. that of what's important in our life and how to take care of it and what are we going to do going forward that that is actually more self-centered yeah that that is actually <laughs> really set now now we're talking self-centered yes that's what we're talking about because yeah, what you're talking about we do we live that way and care for those things 
that we love that much more. Take those certain risks to maybe become what we're like. We're just a little afraid to do that. Yeah. We're ultimately serving ourselves in the future. We've mm-hmm. talked about that and to let you know, um, which is a religious experience. That's religion. I mean, right? And and in, in your and in, in ultimately that would that would be inversely, yeah, in, from the inside out, the most self-centered thing you could do, the most selfish thing you could do for yourself and others. And I'm trying to, I'm really working on, I, my, my pastor says I pushed a big rock up a steep hill on this one. <laughs> I'm really working on, on I, I just, I, 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 th- I believe there's a truth that actually the most selfish, truly selfish, not in, not in the, uh, the definition, the Webster's we run around with it today. Yeah. These are the most truly selfish uh, acts and, 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 and people we can be are actually simultaneously being the most selfless. And then the reciprocity starts and it starts to feed us back and, and serve ourselves. And again, I don't think you get rid of that ego. I think you actually, the really healthy ego is, is, in, is, is, is part and parcel with that service, with, those, with, with, with that caring for that which we love the most, including ourselves. Yeah. And you talk about this in the course a lot, basically the virtue of selfishness and that you can't take care of other people if you're not taking care of yourself. If you don't know what you want, if you don't know what's important to you, if you don't know what has you at your best, you know, you're not going to be what you can be for the world, for other people, you know, for the stranger you bump into on the street. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't believe we are. I I think, you know, the parable of the talents in the Bible? No, what is it? The parable of the talents is basically the, the, you know, the way came back with, came back, even one buried, one lost, Mm -hmm. damn the one that buried it, damn the brother that buried it. But the, the one, the one that, that does the right thing is the one who turns the money or the gift into more, right? To whom much is given, much is expected. And I I do think all of us are born with a kind of a unique potential uh, or a capacity. And to not realize that potential or that capacity because you're scared, because you're intimidated, because you're codependent, because you make it about everyone else. I mean, that does deprive the world of things. Like people who realize their potential employ other people, they inspire other people, they make things that other people enjoy, they invent things, you know, they make art that lasts, that stands the test of time. I think, you know, realizing your potential is both selfish and selfless along the sort of dichotomy that you set up. Is it, it's also, I think, a part of, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna, redefine selfish in this way. Mm -hmm. And I'm supposing ears are going, okay, that which I do for me, uh, damn be the world, at the expense of my neighbor, I'm going after what I want more of. I start to Mm -hmm. now go, okay, so I can be successful. Maybe we got to get in there and start redefining what that word is. Success. Mm -hmm. What is it? What would we be doing if we're doing all for ourselves? That's part of with my redefinition of selfishness. Okay. What are you doing? Or the, our definition of what we call selfish today. When we say, Oh, that's a selfish thing you're doing. Yeah. I argue most of them. No, it's not. It's not a self less thing they're doing, but it sure as hell ain't the best thing for them. Yeah, sure. They're not doing, they're not serving themselves with that idea, with that Im- immediate gratification or that burn bridge or that lie, cheat, steal to get what they want. And they got it. Yeah. You got the trophy. Okay. But, Man, that's like transient. <laughs> that's not yeah. selfish. That was like kind sure. of foolish. You'd be you kind of put yourself in a corner, bro. Tomorrow, yeah. you didn't buy yourself any equity for freedom in your own future. So that's not truly selfish. Right. May, there's another word for it, but it ain't selfish if you ask me. I mean, so define redefining what we call success. Redefining mm-hmm. right now what? It's a Success seems to be this thing we're, that, we're, that we're taught to chase, and you brought it up earlier, from this stimulus that we're being fed in the world and every ad and what the world tells us, how you succeed, how you become happy. It's a, it's a one-lane highway going vertical. 
directly okay. vertical. And that highway is packed. And horns are honking and people are, everyone wants on that highway. Quantity. Sure. More, more, more quantity. Highest number wins. Highest building wins. And a lot of that becomes, can become at the sacrifice of quality. And sure. so what is success? If it's all quantity, at the lack of bringing more quality and qualification to our life, our personal life, selfishly. If it's not bringing that, if the quantity is not bringing that quality, yeah, then we're on the wrong highway. We're, we're using the wrong calculator for what we're deeming to be successful and what, what, how we're defining how we're truly being selfish to ourselves or not with ourselves. Yeah. It's like there's a lot of people that have won a lot of championships, a lot of people that have made a lot of money, started big companies, won a lot of awards, had what seems like a glamorous, wonderful life. But how many of those people are happy? How many of those, how, for how many of those people did it do for them what they thought it would do for them? And then there is, you could argue a, a, a rarer feat, which is the person who is great at what they do and has enough or and feels good about themselves or and is a good person, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's, that's the honey hole. You're, that's the spot right there. That's, that's, the, that's the man, that's the woman, that's the person right there. Yeah. And which one of those are you aiming at? Or are you unthinkingly going, Steve Jobs, greatest, most famous CEO of all time. That's who I'm modeling my life after. And you're not asking, well, what was it like to be Steve Jobs? Would I be happy living in that guy's brain, body, house? You can't just think, oh, I'm sure it's a nice, fancy house. You have to go, is this what I want? Is this what I'm meant for? Is 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 it even possible to be a happy or good person at that level, living that way, having made those choices? No judgment on him yeah. specifically. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. And then along the way, while you're that's your aspiration. And again, I'm when I've been accused of this, and I want to throw this out there for any ears on it. And Ryan just said it. I'm not saying it, and I don't really hear him saying it at all. Chasing the quantity, nothing wrong with chasing the quantity. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> um, amen. But if your aspiration is to be like that mogul or to be, I know, I know I got friends, you know what the, the ambition is? I want to be the richest man in the world. I want to be the richest yeah. person in the world. I'm like, wow, that's okay. That's, that's yeah. a badass ambition. Now, yeah. along the way, <laughs> and I look and, I've, and they've told me, no, 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 I don't care about it. Highest number. I want to be on the top four of the richest person in the world. I'm like, oh, wow. All right. And they don't, and they're not qualifying. They're not bringing in along the way measurements of like necessarily a, an ethics measurement. Or yeah, like sure. Going, Whatever That's the race I'm racing, bro. Yeah. Um, I, know, I know some people like that. Now, if you bring up the Steve Jobs or whoever it's going to be, and you say, yeah, what's their house like? Well, you got to, and well, how, how do I want to be like them? Great for the aspiration, but they, the, whoever that is chasing that, make sure that you're asking, what's my house look like? How am I different than Steve Jobs? Where do he and I differ a little bit? Where, man, if I'm sure. trying to mimic him, we know that, that never happens, right? I mean, you can't mimic sure. anybody, even if you write the exact same words, make the exact same moves. It's a different time. It's a different meeting. It's a different choice. Sure. Um, but I know I, I've, I've got, I've got, I know, got some friends that do that too, that are going after to be some, just like someone or try to imitate and they are completely blind along the way to who they are, to what they feel, to what matters to them, to they're so objectively, I guess, chasing something that they want to be that they never really subjectively go, oh, wait a minute. Who am I? What am I doing? What yeah. do I like? What do I give a shit about? Yeah. And I think what we're saying is that the two don't have to contradict each other. And that goes back to the selfish can be the selfless. The two are not contrary. You can chase an aspiration, write that billboard, play it first, that headline out there that you're chasing, that you want 
that eulogy or whatever it is that's being read, that legacy that you will leave, the shadow across this earth, this globe, when you go, chase that. Great. But along the way, sure. how's the path personal? How are you, I don't know, what words do you use? More healthy? Do you, do you, did you, did you care? For, not at the expense. Did you get there? Can you get there? Not at the expense of harming people you loved or, 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 or not being a, being around as a, as a, a husband, a father for a lover or friends or whatever those things are. Did you, did you, did you, did you, if you, if you love food, but then all of a sudden you, you at the expense, you quouldn't join a meal on the way mm-hmm. to get there. I don't know, you can do both. Yeah. Cause what if you get in a plane crash, uh, halfway there? Did you like that ride? You know, uh, or, or was, was the sacrifice and the struggle and the compromises and everything you made along the way, was it only worthwhile if you get the outcome, right? right. Which you don't control, right? You don't control whether you don't control who, who gives the Academy Award at the end of the award season. You don't control where you saw this with your book. You don't control the New York Times decides who the number one book book is, not what the objective sales are, just like you don't con- Forbes decides who the richest person in the world mm-hmm. is. Uh, the audience decides who the best musician of all time is, mm-hmm. you know, the market decides who the best baseball player in the world is. All, all that stuff is, is outside your control. So I'm not saying you never delay or defer gratification. You never sacrifice so you can get something. But I, I'm trying to get to a place in my work where actually doing the work is itself enjoyable and rewarding. And then the sales and the reception is a bonus on top. Right. Yeah. It's a great place to get if you can get there. I've been there. It's hard though. It's hard. I've been there. I've been there a few times and I still got some of the DNA in me, but I, I hear it. I'm working on it too, man. I, I'm trying to try. If it's still trying to have your cake and eat it too, I'm still like, well, yeah. hang on a second. The result does matter to me here. I'm like, ah. Oh. I know. Um, well, if you don't I care mean, about the results at all, nobody will pay for you to do it anymore, right? So I, I yeah, we, you, li- we live you, in a world where you got you partners that care. to be present. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know it, let's admit this, though. Does any... Well, yeah, I could even say that as for me, but how... At least... This is true. I think the amount of times that the result of the getting of what it is that you wanted, the actual capture proof being what you thought it was going to be or giving you what you thought it would give you. It doesn't happen that often. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Sure. Because I've had a couple experiences in my life where actually when I got to the top of that mountain or through that proverbial door and got that prize that I was after, I had whoever gave it to me recite to me exactly what I had written down and planned. Yeah. Said, and when I get there, this is what can be said. This is what I'll get. And I was like, did you get my mail? And they didn't get my mail. I'm like, that's what I, that, 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 that's exactly what I was trying to. So I've had it yeah. happen a couple of times and call it, I don't know what you call it, but it, it, but the other 99.9% of the times I know for me and this, what I get from others is that you never, it's not ever, I mean, well, let me say this for fact. I think it is fact that you land there. You never go ta-da. Yes. You land there. You never go. Hum, I did it. That never happens. And I think a lot of us think that that's going to happen. Yeah. And, and that, that I've never heard of actually happening. Yes. And I don't believe does. You, you know, you immediately go, oh, well, the, I just handed the baton off to my higher self and, 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 and I'm, I've still got, I can't even see the, see the ceiling. I've got, yeah. I've got, I've got, I'm just getting started here. I remember the first time uh, I hit the New York Times bestseller list. I was mowing my lawn when my agent called and he goes, you hit it. And I was like, cool. 
now I got to finish mowing my lawn. You know, mm. like the, the, the ticker tape doesn't come pouring out from the ceiling. Nobody throws you a parade. It, the, the thing you needed from your dad that you didn't get, the pain that you felt from your childhood, it doesn't, the hole is not magically filled. Yeah. And I, I've got to imagine you're, you're hoisting the Oscar over your head. It isn't to da and it doesn't magically do everything that you dreamed or hoped it would do for you. It's nice. Well, or did I have, oh yeah, it was, it was nice. It was a wonderful accomplishment. I love achievement and accomplishment. And I got, it was my peers telling me, Hey, you did excellent. That gave me a certain sense of validation and all kinds of wonderful things. Um, but I don't think I, I honestly didn't have, I didn't have goofy expectations of what it would do if. Hmm. I never really got, a, I never really, I, ne I never had an objective. I, you know why? Because I felt like that would be like, you know, kissing Peter to steal from Paul. I felt like that would be kind of a coup de gras. If you dare have the arrogance to get objective and think, what would my life be like if I won the Oscar? Before you even got that son of a bitch, who the hell do you sure, think sure. you are? You ain't getting that. You yeah. know what I mean? So again, whoop, I mowed the lawn. Mm -hmm. I just mowed the lawn and all of a sudden I got done and I got lawn of the year and they handed me a trophy and I won an Oscar and I was like, oh, wow, cool. Sure. You sure. know, but I never stopped out to go, oh, buddy, if I get lawn of the year, if I win this Oscar, what if? You know, I never, yes. I never had the, I never had the arrogance or confidence to be that objective. Yes. Of if, when, because I felt no, like as it would draw me from ever getting it. I, yes. As a as a cherry on top, that's you want it to be the cherry on top, not the whole reason you're doing it, because it won't do it for you. It won't. And and and, and I think the other thing that happens, right? You're, you you win the award, you do the thing, you pull it off. There's that voice inside you that can go, "This isn't what I thought it would be." It's probably because I need to do it again first, right? Like I got to <laughs> prove it's not a freak. I got to do it again. Yeah. If I get, if I just do it twice, there can yeah. be no argument. Yes. <laughs> it, it was not folly or fad. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's what and keeps us going. What, you know, keeps the human species three going. times though. I'm telling you, I'm on my way to unanimous now. Mm-hmm. You know, if I just had, has anyone ever gotten four? Four. Yeah, four of them? Ah. Yep. <laughs> all the the most. Yeah. What's the most? I need <laughs> one more yeah. than the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, what a great I, so, race. You're going to take it. So, so I love the course, by the way. I thought it was awesome. And um, one of the things that struck me, so we talked about New Year's resolutions earlier. My New Year's resolution this year with my wife, we sat down and we're like, the word of the year is less, less, just across the board, less. So it's funny because your course is all about more this, more that, more this, but you are also saying less at the same time. Like I, it was, it was interesting to think my, my mantra for the year was less. And yet you're talking about more balance, more mm -hmm. joy, you know, you're talking about less of things that are not those things so you can have room for more of the things that matter. Right. Process of elimination. Um, yeah. Addition uh, by subtraction. Bingo. Yeah. You know, uh, less, we know it, less options sometimes can, can, you know, less, uh, we've talked about, we're too many yeses to make a tyrant out of anybody. Uh, yeah. Um, too many options. Oh my gosh. Well, we got uh, paralysis of analysis. Just make a freaking decision. You got a white t-shirt. You got a black one. Take the damn, put the damn thing on. Go. It doesn't matter. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, uh, less conveniences certain times. Oh man. I'm, uh, these, these, these conveniences are causing me anxiety, bro. My car. I can't even, I can't, I'm afraid to touch anything. My damn car. Why does my phone keep switching over? Did you just ran in my conversation because you were sitting in the car and I walked in the driveway. I don't want, why did it switch over to the speaker in the car? This is a private car. What the hell is going No, I should, I want to be able to manually put that back like when Iron Maiden was on. And, I'm, and I don't want to be nostalgic about it, but I want to say, whoa, 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 whoa. Your, oh, things are getting, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm over-engineering my life yes. for convenience. Less complex things. And, 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 and actually, I got too many, uh, I had this conversation with a friend the other day. 
and he and he and he and his uh, 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 wife uh, were talking about they're very successful and they have a lot of staff mm-hmm. and they and they and they and they go to counseling and these things and they came and they and they said they come to dinner and when they do sit down for dinner they go so how are you feeling today and all of a sudden they said they we started sounding like our our counselors our therapist. Yeah. And all of a sudden they, they looked at each other, and they noticed, you know what? We've lost dependency on each other. We have so huh. many people doing so many things and we go that we have no dependency. Whoa, I married you. I love you. I want to be dependent on you. And she was like, oh, I want to be dependent on you. And we're like, yeah. we got to get rid of some of this stuff because everyone's doing so much for us. And we're starting to sound like them. Right. Dependency can be about, you know, more dependency and, and reliability and more love. And that joy can be about having less of a lot of the things sure. around us. can be about saying no. No is as important or more important than yes in, 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 in relationships and in, in, in life and career a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you say no to some things and by extension, you are saying yes to other things, right? And when you're saying yes to everything, you're also saying no to a lot of invisible stuff, stuff up uh, up the road, stuff you haven't considered. You don't even realize the stuff you're pushing out because of all the yeses that you're saying. What's the great, the great no you share with me a few, a couple, few weeks ago? Which what I've, did I say? I've, which I've gone out and quoted you, by the way. I didn't oh, what did I say? Steal it. I, I always I said, I've had to say, Certain acquaintances come in the bookstore, what have you, and, and they'll, they'll want to talk and I have a certain limit I can talk and I have to tell them, look, no, I have to go because I have some really good friends that are here or my family's here. And if I spend this time with you, I'm going in the yeah. debit. I'm getting less of them and sure. giving more, less of myself to them, the ones, and I need to nurture those relationships. So great to meet you. I, want, I'm not, I don't want to be rude. I know you're thinking I'm being rude maybe, but I got to go tend to what? give more to what I really care about. Yeah, because I feel like who who is first on the chopping block when I say yes to stuff? It's my kids, my wife, and then it's usually something pertaining to my work or my health, right? So uh, when you end up saying yes to this random stranger who doesn't know how to uh, exit a conversation or you say yes to getting sucked down some social media argument that you don't need to be in, you're saying no to the six-year-old who's not going to be a six-year-old that much longer. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to ask your advice on, on something per, pertaining to kids stuff because uh, I was thinking about it. You, you know, you have a cool life, right? You, you could accept jobs all over the world. They're usually in exotic or cool or interesting locations. You could take trips. You could afford to go stuff. How do you strike the balance between uh, a cool life Mm. And a stable, consistent, uh, you know, balanced life. Yeah. Well, read the, you know the definition of what your values change and what's cool changes. It's different. Mm. Mine are different than now than before I had kids. Sure. You know, it was it cool before Camille and I started a family that I could have a dream of Africa last night and head out there today with a backpack with a one-way yeah. ticket and say, I'll be back when I get back. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. Can I do that anymore? No, I can't do that anymore. Right. No, I, I, I got the, I have dependents. <laughs> you know what <laughs> sure. I mean? Um, here, here's something and bless Camilla for this. But here, here's a real, and this is a way of engineering the coolness with the stability. Before we had children, before she decided to pull the goalie, <laughs> she put her hands on my shoulder and she said, okay, on one condition. I said, yes, ma'am. She goes, you go, we go. Yeah. And I remember what going through my head is this sort of thinking, you know, as this independent 
coyote of an artist who likes to live in his airstream with maybe just his dog around going like, well, well wait a minute. I would, yeah. I, 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 I don't know if I could do that. that, that. And as I'm saying that, the little voice of my mother in my ear comes in and goes, you better nod your head and say, yes, ma'am. Cause she just gave you a gift that way. Yes, ma'am. And she goes, okay. Yeah. And that's been a non-negotiable for our family. Mm-hmm. Now, my job does take us all over. Is it a family discussion or at least a long mini discussions with, with Camilla before I choose to, and she measures me. There's been ones where I'm like, yeah, I really want to do this. She was like, you're not, you haven't convinced me, Matthew, that creatively this is going to get you off so much that you've got to do this Yeah. at the expense of us. Cause we're going to, we're going to pick everything up. We're coming with, we're moving in. I got to deal with the schooling. I got to deal with the bah, 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 bah. Right. Now, when she hears that and we go back and forth, she she knows. She doesn't have to say it. And I don't have to say yeah. it. She'll just be like, yep, got it. We're doing it. She can just mm-hmm. tell. You know, I've convicted her, convinced her without trying to, without having to say, okay. But, you know, and she's like, yep, got it. She asked me all the, she pressure tests it with me. She gets all the right, the right answers that she believes she sees my true self coming up. She's like, yep. Then all of a sudden, she puts a lot of stuff on hold for to, to get the family ready to go. Yeah. Where we're going to go and move our life there and their life there and activities and things that which, where she's going to have to continue working on the things that she's working now mobily. Um, and that takes an incredible amount of preparation. She can't just yeah. up and do it tomorrow. It takes weeks, if not months of preparation. But that's what we do. And, you know, in that way, are we gypsies? Yeah. In that way, are we traveling boogarooskies? Yeah. But we're really not gypsies because we're going, because we have family everywhere we go. Yeah. We take the family with us. And people are different colors and there's different languages and there's different cultures. But the rhythm's all work out to be somewhat the same because we've engineered that this is how we go. We know that non-negotiably, this is what we'll do. We'll we'll program the days from activities and how long we're going to be there. Do we sign the kids up for certain teams? You know, uh, um, what teacher do we do? What teacher in to do this or how much of this is online? Well, if it's for a short amount of time, we'll do it this time for three months. Hey, let's go post our zip code there. This is it. And so that, has been a engineered something that Camilla engineered yeah. for our family that has maintained a stability in the cool adventures that we take. Um, that's beautiful. I, I love that. That's my, that's my dream too. And I, I was just thinking about it because, so I had to go to New York for the launch of the daily dad. I was, I was going to be gone for a week. They sort of stretched it out. And I was like, there, it felt, it felt weird to put out a parenting book and then leave my family for a week, you know? So I was like, well, well, I was like, well, we'll, we'll pack up the whole wagon and we'll, we'll all go. And it was awesome. You know, we spent a week in New York, we did a bunch of stuff and then, you know, so, okay. So they miss a week of school and then one of them came home sick and then he got the other one sick. And then, you know, it took like, we were gone for a week. But it took three weeks to get back into the the Texas routine, right? Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. I was I was I was struggling with what you talk about in the course, which is was that selfish or selfless? Like my instinct was I want to be around my family. Uh, I don't want to miss them. I want us to spend time together. Or was actually the more selfless thing be like, sorry, I got to be alone in a hotel room for a week uh, doing, doing my thing, but they're rooted and they have their life. So it's, it's a right. tricky, it's a tricky balance. It goes to yeah. what else are you talking about in the course? It's a balance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and there's a consequence with both those choices, you know? Yes. Um, look, I had bef- around that time when we, when we had just had kids and Camilla had said, this is the mandate going forward. You go, we go. I, I did sit, I talked with many, um, Elder men in my business who had children. Yeah. And asked him, what did you do? You worked around the world. You had children. Every one of them said, well, it's either, it's either dad or friend. And mm-hmm. I let them choose. I, I let them choose friend. They didn't come with me. Mm. 
And every one of them followed that up after a pretty sincere ellipsis with, well, if I could do it again, I wouldn't have let him choose friends. I'd have made him, I'd, 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 I'd have made him choose dad. Cause I, cause I've, didn't have the connection. I not connected today. I could have been there when, and I have a regret. Like if maybe that, you know, they got into that trouble. And if I was there, they maybe they wouldn't. I could have been guidance and, and, and every one of them regretted that decision. Now, look, making that decision, you already talk, talk about, you know, it's already just even engineered, if you're going off, you're the one going to New York, following you. If I'm the one going to my job, it's following me. There's a self yeah. call that self-centered. And I mean that without judgment. I'm saying, okay, well, I mean, right. You know, it's, it's, it, it, and, and then when you got two people sometimes that have their own careers that can go, Whoa, there becomes right. another thing. We have some, we have some friends like that, that we're, we, we watch and talk to them about how do they balance that? Because they have two different careers and sure. they have kids. And they're going like this sometimes. And that's, it that provides other, other new challenges, even more so it seems to us from the outside on the relationship between them. Yeah. Uh, even more so sometimes than how it is with the, with the, with the, with the, with the children. But we, we see, we have some friends that do it successfully or seem to be. I, I, it's obviously a privileged thing, but I saw an interview with Michael Keaton where he was like, I just took a bunch of time off when I had kids. He's like, you'll never regret it. Mm. And so I, the tricky part of the question is, is like, you know, let them have their stable home life with lots of friends or, you know, see dad a lot or mom a lot who, who works a lot. Obviously the third option is, uh, you could just work less. Right. That's the, that's that's the harder choice. Yeah. Maybe sometimes. Well, work less. You could also there's also great merit to. Children seeing their mother or father or parent have to go away and go to work. And no, I'm not going to sure. be there. Entertain right. yourself. You know, we've taught you, you know, the deal, you know, the drill. Set your own alarm. That's right. Make your own breakfast. I'll be calling. Well, fa- hey, hey, FaceTime. Thank you. Yeah, very, magic. very, very helpful. Much more than a phone call. Yes. yes. It has, 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 has nights when I'm away where I can just be put on FaceTime on the kitchen island while they're making dinner and in the background walking around just being like, oh. Yes. Oh, okay, it's not thank you. Game, but it, it's in the ballpark. It's in the ballpark and helps. Yeah. And when I walk in that door 10 days later, because of that, FaceTime and being around in that ballpark, it's not, oh my God, where have you been? It's, it's, hey, there right. you are. Great to see you. It's, it's, it's not like you went away and came back and, oh, you look so different. When'd you grow the beard? It's kind of, you know what I mean? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> um, so it helps. And there is value, obviously, to our, you know, children seeing their parent go to work. And go, yeah. no, you, you, you actually can't come. Popeye's got to, I've got to, you know, whether it's go to the, whether it's me going to the set or you going like, no, actually I need to watch. And what, do, what's, what's, what's dad doing? What's mama doing? Well, that's what they're doing right there at a very basic level is what had, what's putting food on your plate. That's what has that place that we have that puts a roof over it. And then you can extend that conversation to, you know, how else we get rewarded for going and working or doing good work or having a, having a, having a talent at a craft that is in demand and can, that you can supply. Um, so yeah. there's value in that as a child. So I'm not saying, you know, that works. You said Keaton said, I stayed, I just boom, didn't work. Stayed with my kids. I mean, no, no, I can be, I could be, I know I could be a better dad. I, I, but even if look, we just, you know, summer just started. We'll have today. I'm not going to, I won't do every, I won't spend every daylight hour today with doing things with my kids. They got some friends right. over. Sure. They do their things. They might invite me in. I'll be around the conference. It's kind of being, a, it's being around. Yes. It's being around. It's not like, I don't feel like, okay, we got to go to Six Flags today. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, quality it's, time, quality time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, I, I think about that too, right? Like I feel guilty. It's like, okay, I do this talk to this cool audience. I got to get on a plane this afternoon, go to the hotel, do the talk in the morning, fly home in the afternoon. I'm, you know, I'm gone less than 24 hours. I feel guilty. Okay. I missed a bedtime, missed a school drop off, whatever. Then I go, Hey, yesterday I was home all day, but I had a meeting and then I wanted to go work out. Then I did this. I was gone most of the day anyway. Right. And yeah. so here I am kicking myself about this important uh, thing that I did. Meanwhile, when I was with my kids, I wasn't with my kids. Right. right. And so the, the question is to me, not how much are you gone, but when you're there, are you actually there? And I think that's yeah. true for life, for work, relationships, whatever it is. Be, be where you are when you're there. Yeah. Hey, and it's, that's tough to do. That's tough to do too. Look, I, I've, I've got to get, I'm still working on getting better at, if we're going to call that a vacation, if we're going to call yeah. hanging with the kids. Like, like it's, it's tough to go for me to go to my, one of my children, my youngest, for instance, and go, I'm going to follow you. Yeah, what do you want to do? All day, whatever. I'm following your lead in conversation and where you want to go. Huh. That's tough duty, man. Yeah. Golly, you can break a sweat by 9.30 a.m. on that on that drill. <laughs> of course. I mean, and, 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 and then, but then some views, some awesome things can happen. For sure. And it can be awesome, but it can be a bit sporadic. It has no concept of projection of time or, well, if we did that, is there food there? And I'm getting hungry. Should we go get, and do we need to come back around? Cause mama wants to, does want us to, we did, we agree. We're going to have dinner together at seven. It, it, yeah. You know, it can go, it can be a one-way ticket. And I've, and I've taken a few with my with children. You go like, how did we get out here? I don't know how we, good thing we got a full tank of gas. We can get back home. We just followed your bliss all day. And it was, it was, it was great, but it's, it doesn't have much construct around it, yeah. which is, I think, part of the 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 the, the additive of why it's also can be great for us. But you can't do it. I mean, I I have trouble doing it. Just, you know, I have trouble doing that for a full day or over yes. and over. You know, um, I, I remember I was playing with my youngest once, and it was like he's like he wanted to do a puzzle, so we got a puzzle down, and then he did that for two minutes, and then he's like, now I want to go play with this ball and then we play with the balls and then he's like now i want to do the dinosaurs you know it was just like one thing right after another that i i had to do all the setup i had to do all the stuff and i remember i was sort of complaining to my wife later i was like can we just like pick a thing why do we have to go from one thing to the other and she goes you're the toy she's like do you not understand you are the toy she he is he is making you do stuff and that is the game it has nothing to do with whether it's dinosaurs or going in the pool or doing the stuff you are the toy and now that I, I can accept that, it actually makes it so much easier to, to just sort of be bossed around and to let it happen. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, there are also the toy. The toy is also the one that has to clean everything up, all the shit they get out. <laughs> of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, you know, I'd say this. There have been, there's moments, though, that we have where you're like, Oh, I'm so glad I was there. Of course. For this. Yes. Daughter becoming a teenager. Son. Hey, what's up, buddy? Well, I had a tough day today. You did. Oh, you're already as a father, as a parent going, they won. They, they, they told me they had a tough day. They shared. They, they, they let me see. They gave me access and they shared that. Oh, my gosh. And then, yeah, what's up? And then, I don't know, and then this, 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 and all of a sudden, you're in a conversation where, even if, forget being away. Yeah. If it was 30 minutes later, you might not have got that. Or if you were looking at this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Five minutes later. Or if you were there and doing something else. That you and there's certain, and then they and then they ask a question. 
You know those beautiful and awesome questions that we get as parents, the ones that go immediately into, into our ears and through our brain and tell us on a cellular level, this is a great opportunity for a great answer because this is going to, my answer is shaping the lens with which they will see the world through for the rest of yeah. their life. And mothers do it. And fathers, we do it. And when, boy, when we can pull off that answer, in a way, it's not bop, 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 but they can go, ah, yeah, you, oh, okay. And you know, you, you, you know, you got them. You're like, yes, that's the, that's my favorite sort of parenting moment. Um, you know, and that you got to go, there's been some, you know, cause some of those, when they come late at night, you're like, those are green lights, man. Talk about a green make, light. Yeah. Big ones. And you, and you, and you, because you can tell there's a lot of times, you know, we're teaching our kids and I can tell it's going in one ear and out the other. And there's some times where you get access and they have a conversation and they invite you in and the conversation continues and they follow up on it days later or weeks later. Or as every other parent says, they all follow up on a lot of stuff we didn't think they caught once they're out of the house at 1920 and come back yeah. and go, I remember that. Like, you remember that? But boy, when it happens in real time, it's... That's, well, you know what, what I think is interesting, though, you just said there, there's these parenting moments that you're glad you're there for, right? And you listed some, they ask you a question, they're playing, they're vulnerable about something, you know, you listed a bunch of stuff. But you didn't, you didn't pick any Six Flags moments, right? Those are, those are free moments. They're yeah. ordinary moments. They don't require any scheduling. It's just regular life, what Jerry Seinfeld calls garbage time. Yeah. Yeah. And being there, being a, there's something also, we, it's not just with children, but with friends and lovers, parents, parents of being just in the same room, in mm -hmm. the same house. Yeah. Passing by each other without saying a word. Yeah. But knowing you're there. I, 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 I look, I selfishly have my office very close to my house, like mm -hmm. real close. I can't help it. I like to get just a faint ambionic sound of my kids laughing or, or my, my, uh, the home life happening right over there. Just mm -hmm. an earshot. Just, it just, totally. I, uh, for me, I, if I'm too far away from it, I'm kind of. Look, you know what I mean? I'm looking, I'm kind of, I'm, you know, now, uh -huh. you know, and then do I go, Hey, when they come in the door, like we start this conversation, I'm on, my son comes in looking for the iPad. Do I go like, Oh, does it go through my head? Like, remember I told you last night I was going to need this today to am when I didn't take the iPad. Yeah, it does. God, all goes through my head, but I loved it. Come, come in, right. comes in and looks for him. Like, great. I, I, yeah. it, being a, being a, around just, for a look, a smile, a walk by, an arm around, a kiss on the forehead, a hey, I'm making so and so for lunch. You want any? Oh, that's the best. You know, yeah. Oh, you want me to toast that bread? Ooh, yeah. Butter yeah, olive oil. Butter. When they, good when, they when they ask you to get them stuff. Yeah. Have you have you read The Boy, the Fox, the Horse, and the Mole? Have you read that kid's book? No. Oh, it's incredible. I'll, I'll send it to you. I'll, I carry it in the bookstore. It's amazing. It's by this guy, Charlie Mackesy, who's this brilliant illustrator. But there's this line in it, and the kid says something like, sometimes I find it hard to say I love you, so I just say I'm glad we're all together. Mm. That's, the, that's it right there to mm. me, right there. Mm, mm, same room mm. you can hear them spending time together even if they're on the ipad you know we're supposed to feel guilty that they're yeah. on their screen time i don't give a shit no. i'm just glad we're uh we're all in the same room I hear you. and and then you know and this is one i'm enjoying uh recently so you, our kids are close enough where the boys compete all right yeah so there's a little sibling 
competition, sort yeah. of like anything you do is like, ah, that's, I'm going to belittle it and, and, you know, and, oh, that's not cool. But, but to hear my boys go have a similar game that they play together on an iPad and to hear their laughter mm. Yes. And they're using the voices and talk, oh, and then talk about, oh, remember that time when you did the thing? And hear them going yeah. over there on the side going, yes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is on. Sure. An iPad. Or sometimes that is on a video game. And, and it, it, uh, you know, but it's, 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 it, that I've seen that also. If that's after the sun went down, I've seen that lead to, Oh, the youngest for the first time in a while in, enjoyed catching the pass of the ball from his brother. Yes. And for the past few months, he didn't he catch it from me. He didn't want to catch it from big bro, though. Yeah. Because he's throwing it. I don't want to catch his bass. But now, because of that time they had last night where they laughed and came together, some music or that game, now, first thing in the morning, they're out there throwing passes of whatever ball it is in the backyard. And little bro, who was pushing everything big bro was doing away, is now giving 100%, diving catches and getting going, good pass. Wants to catch that ball. For brother. For big brother. Doesn't want to drop one. For big brother. That's beautiful to see. Well, speaking, speaking of road trips, right, uh, some of the best things we have done as a family have come from things or places that my son has heard about in a YouTube video, right? You watch some video of somebody snowboarding down a sand dune, right? He didn't mm. know that was a thing you could do. And I was like, let's see if there's any of those in, uh, in Texas. And there is in Monahan's, right? Monahan State Park. So we took an eight-hour road trip together. And we didn't snowboard. We went down on a sled. But the idea is you can learn about things through the screen. That's my life, by the way. It would be weird if I was like anti-screen. I've been learning about the world through my computer since I was a teenager, opened up so many things. He learns about something. And then what you do, you take the green light when they're open or interested in something. And you say, I can help you see that in person. Mm -hmm. Let me take the neck. Let's, let's take this up a notch. Let's do this. Let's let's uh, yes. let's get in the camper and we'll go there. Yes, that's a well. There, there's a great use, way to use the tool and access of information in places. The the virtual access to then go. Let's go see it in reality. Yeah, let's go experience it yeah. in reality. Now, I want to I want to pivot here for a second on a note on that and not because I'm, I'm loving our, our, our discussion on the assets of it and assets of digital and media and et cetera. And I, and I agree with you. I'd be old fashioned, nostalgic fool to be sitting here going like, Oh, da, 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 da. I don't ever want to be that guy. And I'm not that guy, but what about, I have a fear when you see that when we see that, that, that our, our children and our, and myself, I'm guilty of it. I see that sand dune in Monaghan. We get in the car and we go eight hours to go do it. And we're so excited. And the reality is it's a letdown. Mm -hmm. The hill wasn't as steep. The, 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 it didn't go as fast as it looked like they were going on the video. The sand was too hot. Eh, five minutes after one rundown, I'm done. Yeah. Well, we did it. I have, a, I have a, that 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 pain that pains me, and I and I and, I, and it, it it happens sometimes. And it's a larger fear of mine, almost on a more existential level. Of I mean, re realities. A bit of an underdog right now, but not just not just the beautiful sights, right? I, I think about how much beauty we take for granted all around us, right? Like, um, you know, you go, oh, I, I can't wait to to watch the sunset over the ocean in Hawaii, 
But the sunset in Austin's pretty good too, you know. Yeah. And how often do I make the time to see it? Or well, another road trip we went out to Big Bend, you know, you're looking at the stars. They're obviously brighter and bigger there because there's less light pollution. Yeah. But I was taking out the trash last night, and I looked up and I was like, "Fuck, it's pretty good at my house too." Mm-hmm. I could look at this mm-hmm. every single night, but I, I get distracted. I'm too busy looking at the ground or at my phone. And so I, I think it's just, it's a general practice you got to have to go like, what is magical and amazing? Right. And what am I taking for granted about this moment, uh, about this environment? You know, like a poet, a poet doesn't write about roses and sunsets all the time. What they, they find the ability to do is to find beauty in the mundane and the ordinary. And, and I think that's the skill you want to, you want to cultivate. So you, You'd be saying, hey, McConaughey, no reality is not an underdog. It just, it's just, it's just what we're looking at, what we're seeing. Yeah. What's the reality? What, 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 what do you, what do you, what do you see in or how you see in it? Well, you know, I, I was just telling this story recently, you, you know, the movie Gladiator, one of the greatest movies of yep. all time. Um, and uh, I don't know why it didn't hit me until I was rewatching it, but the opening scene in Gladiator Right, uh, Comet- uh, Sorry, Maximus is standing there, and it, there's, there's, it's, it's cold. You can see the, the, the steam coming off the ground. He looks at this, this branch. A bird lands on it. He touches the, you know, the, the wheat bending low under its own weight. To borrow a phrase from, from Marx Aurelius and the Stoics, he's. It's this beautiful scene, right? You think it's beautiful, and then it zooms out just a little bit, and you realize he's on, he's on the front. They're about to fight this terrible battle in this nasty, violent place. And to me, it's, it, I love that idea. You think about movies as a metaphor here. Uh, you choose the lens, right? The zoomed in lens, hey. it's beautiful. The zoomed out lens, it's not beautiful. But sometimes it's the opposite. Sometimes yeah. you're too zoomed in and you got to zoom way out and you see the beauty. It's, it's all about the lens and the angle of the yeah. camera that we decide to Amen. look at at the world. Amen. And our aperture. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's, I, I love, I love that. I would say that myself and most of us, if we're going to say which one of those should we start on would be, I think it'd be most healthy for us to move forward with wider lenses mm-hmm. right now than close. Usually. Yeah. Um, um, you know, my, <laughs> My brother, I got a brother rooster. He got the, he got the, uh, um, cat, not cataract surgery. I forget what it was yeah. on his eyes and he hates it. He hates it. I'm like, why? He goes, man, I miss all the fuzzy edges, man. You got all these damn details, man. It's like, Oh, I got anxieties I never had before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, sometimes, man. Sometimes that 8K we're talking about, that high def in the zoom close yeah. up on the 120 lens, we're like, uh oh, oh, geez. Yeah. No, I didn't want to see that. You know, but we also, in the ver- version of head down, tighter lens. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look outside. A wider lens, a macro lens can just, uh, hell, at least get, can relax us, you know, and help what- us see, see differently. The one, the one thing that's almost certain in the wider shot is that you are smaller, mm. right? It shrinks you down proportionally, right? This is, you know, the, the shot of the, of the earth from space, the blue yes. marble shot. Yep. Every astronaut has spoken about how the most life-changing, uh, psychedelic understanding overtakes you when you look at earth from a distance and you see that everything is connected Everything touches each other. Everything is small. Not, none of the things that you think matter actually matter. And the things you have been putting off feel so urgent and important. And the oneness of everything is there. That is one of my posters for selfish. Right there. That's, that's, that's what I'm getting at. That's what I'm mm. working to do define and, and explain and understand right 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 there you just said it and you said it oneness singularity self ish in all those things where you know as a there, there, there's a 
that, 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 that view, that point of view does two things. And if you're a believer and some would call that, oh, I'm a, the tiniest of a speck in God's palm. Yeah. There, there, there's, you can either be, and then with that comes humility. Mm-hmm. And you can go for, I know for a long time in my life, that feeling made me feel like less. Huh. That made me feel, made my shoulders crunch over, made me lower my head, lose confidence, feel like, oh, then what's it all for? But something, I don't know, something like, I guess spiritually 20 years ago or so hit me as like all of a sudden I felt quite empowered selfishly with that yeah. blue dot, with that speck and then, ah, it took pressure off. Oh, beautiful. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's right. Nothing that I do matters. Oh, that's why it all matters. Th- thank you. Yeah. Now I'm, now I'm, I've come alive. More of me is coming out. Yes. Oh, this little blip of time we're in. That's, oh, it's a speck. Who cares? Yes. That's why it matters so much more. Mm-hmm. And to feel that way. And not have yeah, to not intellectually feel that way, but to understand and actually feel that way is 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 a magic place to 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 be if if we when we can. Yeah, a Stoic philosopher called that the oceanic feeling. So it, the paradox of it is that you feel very small, but you also feel part of something very big, right. and that's the paradox and the beauty and the the overwhelmingness of it is that you are humbled and elevated at the same time. Yay. Yay. Humbled and elevated at the same time. Well, yes. look, I wanted, I wanted to ask you a couple questions about the course. Cause I loved it. Uh, I, you, you are like the king of the one liners, right? The sort of little, almost Zen Cohen's, uh, little, uh, paradoxes of your own. I wanted to riffs on some of them with me, uh, with you. Um, one of my favorites is you you said, I want to be less impressed and more involved. What does that mean? <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> I'm kind of glad I can laugh when you said that. Um, so that's something that came to me soon after my dad passed away and left this life. Um, I was finding a career in Hollywood. I was so happy to be there, or, or at least so thankful. This is that line of where we got with, with, with gratitude, uh, that an over-exaggeration of it, a reliance mm-hmm. on it, can become a, a debit. I was had reverence for where I was. People, wow. Possible, stardom, successful actor, Fame, whoa. And to the extent, and I was just telling, I had this conversation with one of the Cohen brothers. And I've always loved the Cohen brothers. And I was just telling Joel this story the other day. It's like, you know, I had a meeting with you and your brother and John Malkovich early in my career. He's like, oh, you did? Say, he's like, oh, yeah, I remember that. I go, probably easy to forget because I was an absolute dud. In that meeting, I came into that meeting so with such reverence for you and your brother and my, and I was at the table, and I mean the natural gap to enter the conversations. I was like I'm afraid to put my foot in my mouth. Had no rhythm. Didn't have the confidence. I was just. And then when they did say, "So what do you think, Matthew?" I gave like a stock freaking chat GBT yeah. answer or something. It was just stock. It was not within the moment. It was like it was boring. Not and, and, and I walked away going, I blew it. Well, I blew it because I wasn't involved. Mm. I was so impressed with being there. And so sure. around that time and with the courage and clarity and sobriety that you get when you lose a loved one, like I just, my father just moved on. The world becomes flat. Things that you, I revered. Wow. <whistles> Lowered him at eye level. I was like, oh, that's mortal. I'm in that. I'm engaging in that. I'm going to be myself in that. I'm going to listen and I'm going to reciprocate back and forth with the present moment, with what's in front of me. At the same time, things that I 
looked down upon, things that I was patronizing and and you know, pfft, that's not worthy. <whistles> rose up. And I was like, oh, I'm on, I'm eye to eye with that. That's human. That's real. Don't you dare judge that, McConaughey. Uh-uh. Don't you put that down. Don't you belittle that. Look that in the eye. Engage with that. Quit being such a wuss. And that's where that came to me in a dream one night. And I went out and I carved it in a tree. And I know exactly the tree it's in and where it is. It's in Santa, in Santa Monica. Less impressed, more involved. And it comes from, it's great to have gratitude. It's great to have, we need to have respect. But we have to be more than just happy to be here. Yeah. If I have such a reverence for you, if I'm so impressed with talking to Ryan Holiday today right now, oh my gosh, man. This last hour we've talked would have been a hell of a lot more boring if you didn't mm-hmm. find it boring. It would have just, it would have been stock. I would have, I would have, wouldn't have been here. I'd have been like listening to what you say and then trying to go follow up and add a little thing onto what you said and go, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Conversation kind of boring, it doesn't have dynamic. It wouldn't have been real. I wouldn't have really been myself because I've been so impressed. I would have been sure. not been involved. So going forward with respect and gratitude, but not such a reverence for mortality and mortal things as to not be engaged with them, to be able to give more of ourselves to. So we have to be less impressed and more involved to give more of ourselves to our life, to our relationships, to challenges in front of us, to, 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 to pleasures and promises and wins and losses. Be, be, be there with them. Don't be impressed. Don't be so impressed with, with the mortal. I, I love that. It's, it's the idea of like, uh, if not me, then who, right? Like why, why should, oh, I'm just as good as any of these people. Why can't I, why can't I be involved? Why can't I do it? Yep. All right. So what does majoring in the minors mean? Majoring in the minors. Oh, well, I think this is, comes from something in the course when I was talking about balance. I think that's the section it was in. Yeah. Um, I mean, it has get, to do is with that a lot getting, of, out, getting out in the weeds, getting caught up in things that don't matter? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the, it's also, it's also, it's also part of de, in the course about defining what more of what we value, more value. Mm-hmm. And we have to measure, well, look, do, do I have a lot of hobbies? <laughs> that I'm that I'm that I'm really spending about a, a, a not really fair dynamic amount of my day, too much of my day on, and less on my career. Sure. Am I spending too much time on the minors and not majoring? Am I majoring too much in my minors? Am I for me, like in my life, I had it was around uh, I don't know somewhere in the late nineties. Um, I got a phone call from my office where I had a. Badass office, production office in Venice, had a staff of six, paying the rent, paying the salaries. And I'm in Texas. My phone rings back when the phones were not our mobile device, but the number would come up as it yeah. did on my, on my on my phone. The number comes up. I see it's from my office. I reach out to pick up the phone and my hand stopped. And I remember looking at the phone and then looking at my hand going, why did your hand stop mid grab? <laughs> Yeah. And I went, cause I don't want to, I don't want to pick up the call from my office. And then I went and I let it ring out and I went, you don't want to pick up the phone call from your office, from one of your employees that you're paying from the office in Venice that you're paying the rent for. What are you doing? <laughs> what? Well, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I let that phone ring out. And as it did, I picked the phone back up, dialed my lawyer and said, I want to shut down my music label and I want to shut down my production office. I want to pay a solid severance to everybody, but I want to, I want to be, uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, work on my charity, I want to work on my family and I want to be an actor for hire. And so what that did was I got rid of, I had like, music label, I had movie development, I had a couple other things I was kind of doing, minors. Little sure. ca- and so I had like eight proverbial campfires on my desk every morning, including, you know, the, 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 my charity, including my acting career. It was, they were all campfires. So what I did is I got rid of about five of the campfires and I was left with 
the three things that were most important to me. And those three campfires turned into bonfires. So yeah. I majored in my majors and I got rid of five minors that I was majoring in, trying to major in. And I, and I was kind of making C pluses in everything. And when I got rid of five classes and concentrated on the three that I really wanted, I started making A's. Yeah. Majoring in my majors, quit majoring in my minors and got rid of them. Do less better, basically. Do yes. Yes. I got more after I when I got when I had less things that I said that look, I only got and I tell, we have this conversation with my talk about parenting again. I got teenagers coming up. Their life's starting yeah. to get big. They're starting to have, well, I want to do this, but I also got this thing. I was like, yeah, 24 hours in the day. They ain't giving any more. For the first time, you're starting to have to go. There's a consequence here. I can only do this or this. Yeah. How do we balance that? You're going to have to, because you can't do it all. Up until a few, up until a couple of years ago for my kids, it was like, you can do it all. Sure. When you want to. And now things are starting to overlap and interests are starting to overlap. So we're going, don't have to have the answer right now, but you're going to have to start measuring which one do you want to give time to? Well, there's an arrogance to it too, right? It's like how many people... Would, are, are killing themselves to be great at the thing you're trying to major in. Me, it's being a writer, you, it's being an actor, right? It's one of the most competitive industries in the world. And to do it at a high level demands so much of a person. And then here we can find ourselves going, yeah, I can do that with 30% focus. Yeah, I can do that while I'm multitasking. I can do that while I don't have enough time to sleep, while my family life is disrupted. I, I can, I can half ass that and be great. That's how good I am, right. you know, and maybe for a short period, maybe if every condition is favorable, maybe while your metabolism is good or whatever, but there comes a time where you go, you got to go, Hey, if I want to be world-class at this thing, I got to have a world-class commitment to it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And look, You know, part of the slippery slope is we pull it off sometimes when we're working on reserve. We yeah. pull it off. And you look back yeah, and you go, sure. like, geez, that was just as good as when you spent twice as much time on that, bro. We pull it off sometimes when you go, yeah, I can compartmentalize. Yeah. I'm here. Just a second. Yeah. Okay. I'll be right there. What do you say? We've got 10 minutes. Great. Let me check out into the rest of my world and re-enter. But there's a, it starts to leak. It's a mm -hmm. fine line right there where that doesn't start to leak because that 10 minute break, that compartmentalization starts to bleed over into, into, into the major, into what we're really majoring in. Yeah. And especially if we're succeeding and you got people going, it was great. And you're going, was? Yeah. Great, okay. Cause I needed you to tell me that because I got a whole bunch of shit I'm doing. I think it was good. I connected the dots, but you're telling me it was great. Great. Thank you. Okay. Now that, that that's where you start to get a little outside and it's not a singular feeling that, you know, yeah. you know, you know, ain't no one else got to tell you. you no. Know. Yes. Yes. That is exactly what I wanted to do. And if it's not what I wanted to do, I was relaxed enough to be so present that it became something even better and more true than what I wanted to do. Yes. Mm -hmm. And without permission, without approval, that's, I think, when it's, when it's, when it's, we're in the world-class section. And who knows how much better it could have been, right? That's the thing you can't measure, right? The right. opportunity costs, the invisible graveyard of, could yeah. have been 5% better, 10% better, could have been transformatively better, transcendently better, but you'll never know because you, you don't get a, you don't have anything to compare it to. The, look, the assets are always invisible. The debits are sometimes very apparent um, in most things, but the assets are almost always invisible, invisible to, to, to measure. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, if I go do world press for weeks or months and the movie comes out and it 
to hit. Do myself and everybody around the shoot, I'll go, you know, because you did all that press, that really was a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah. We all say that. Yeah. We don't know. Right. If I do no press and the movie's a hit, you go, see? But then you go, I think what it would have done if you'd have done press, <laughs> it could have done even better. Papa. Or you don't do press and then it comes out and it's a bomb. Or you do all the world press and it's still a bomb. You're like, so you sublimate a little bit and you give yourself an excuse to go, well, it only opened at eight. We thought it was going to open at 16. Geez, if I wouldn't have done that press, I might have opened at six. So you, <laughs> I mean, you always, I think you're trying to measure to the upside. Or, or, I mean, to me, the, the, the more interesting variable is the, the next role you were doing, how was it impacted the prep you could have done the headspace you could have gotten into that you didn't do because you were out doing extra press for the last thing. Right. Like I, I think it's like, Hey, I'm, I'm doing speaking, I'm doing media, I'm doing all this cool stuff. What I'm not doing is reading. What I'm not doing is thinking. Mm -hmm. What I'm not doing is growing. Yeah. I'm not doing the, the, the stuff that actually adds up to the finished product later on. But you, the, the cause and effect is so much less measurable. Well, it goes back to what you were saying earlier, what you're working on this year, just the doing of an F the result yeah. and just dispatch. Dispatch true stuff for you and it lands where it lands. And you might be right on it. I mean, there's versions of saying, what do you mean press? What do you mean package? What do you mean market? I just, I just do and dispatch. And, and, and people come to come to it, they come to it. I mean, there's purity in that too. Sure. We're going, I put it out. It's true. I didn't need it to reciprocate and tell me, Hey, we approve. No, nah, I'm just dispatching. I trust me. I know I have, I've had successes. I've told you that story, I think. And, uh, uh, um, the work we did in Dallas Buyers Club. Jared Leto and I met on the last day of set when the last scene was done and they yelled cut. That's a film wrap. We went, wow. Hey, how you doing? Matthew said, Jared. And people go, what do you mean? That's when you met. We talked the entire time, but he was always talking me through the lens of his character, Rayon. And I was talking to him through the lens of Ron Woodruff. And he was always stealing shit from me like Rayon would do to me. And we were kind of through that lens and it was fun. Yeah. And we didn't want to break that wall. Now, what did that mean? We were so head down just doing the actual work. We never got objective to go, oh, hey, think we're doing pretty good there was never you never got out yeah. you never got sure, out sure, to sure. say you know and we got incredible results from that and did that did our way of working have something to do with those results i gotta believe it did and the fact that you were not running a record label while you were doing that has an invisible contribution too. 100 i have to look in the successful life I lead right now, in the big life I've got with family and friends and careers and these and this, that, and the other, and the way I like to test myself to, 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 to have different categories going on in my life, I'm about to go do an acting job now. And I, the pressure I'm putting on myself now is to really make this an absolute one singular self-obsessed vacation where when I go to set, that's it. I'm on set Mm -hmm. and that's my world until it's time to leave that day. And I'll take that little exit out of that world to see my kids and family and have a meal and talk about the day and sleep on it and then come back in. But boy, I want to put, I'm putting the pressure on myself to go give yourself that 12 hours, 12 to 14 hours every day for that to be your singular obsession. You've earned that vacation and you'll do your best work. That'd be very selfish of you and you McConaughey and, 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 We'll see, you know, because sure. now I'm, you know, I'm, I'm preparing really well. I'm feeling confident. I got butterflies as well, but I'm feeling like I'm preparing pretty well. And you got to watch that. Well, I'm so prepared, dude. I can handle what else you got. Yeah, I'll take that meeting. Come on over. Yeah, come on out to the set. Yeah. yeah. You got to watch it. It's discipline. It takes so much discipline. Yeah. So you talk about stress in the course also. You basically said what I took to mean that not all stress is created equal, right? People are like, I've got to get rid of this stress. Some stress is good. <laughs> yes. Stress has gotten a bad rap, man. 
We threw, we threw, we, we thrown the stress over there as the, as the, as the, 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 the status quo boogeyman. Mm-hmm. I mean, we made stress the bad guy out of the bat, out of the gate. Yeah. I mean, look, first off, stress means you give a damn. Bravo. Sure. We, we could all use a little more of that. Um, giving a damn. Sure. Um, if you got any ambition for self improvement or career or fatherhood or parenthood or being a better friend or being better healthier, you're reaching into chaotic, you're dipping the leg over into chaos to try and make some order and evolve. Sure. Get better, improve, stressful. Supposed Resistance to be. is how you grow. Amen. So we, 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 we've seen we've thrown everything into stress. And it, it, call it stress. One thing is I think we do wrongly. But two, to say stress is bad. All mm. stress is bad is the second thing I think we do wrong. I was uh, listening to this NPR and this child psychologist had gone on and he said, look, you talk to children and teenagers and even younger these days. And he said, what's the biggest challenge in your life? They go stress. And go, what do you mean stress? Stress of what? And their list, their litany, the litany of things that they were stressed about were, I don't make as good a grades as Susie. I don't have as cool of shoes as Bobby. I, I, I'm not as good at this sport as Jenny. And he was like, well, that's not actually stress. That's envy. And when right. the children went envy, oh, they all of a sudden felt like, oh, well, I can deal with that. Sure. I can deal with envy. I just was felt, I felt uh, drown. I was drowning under what I was calling stress. But sure. to call it what it really is became a different thing and gave stress a break. And right. they were able to deal. Sure. Um, the, 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 the second half of that is, Again, what we were talking about earlier, just a minute ago, that, that there's a lot of good stress we have. Yeah. You're supposed to have it. Do you, do and you, then there's some, parent- there's some things you don't need to be stressed about. One of, the, one of the expressions that I heard that was life-changing for me, again, it's a little privilege, but they said, uh, if money can fix the problem, you don't have a problem, right? So a lot <laughs> of times we're stressed about things that we could easily solve. We're just being cheap. Or we're being lazy, or you know, whatever. Like I remember, I was talking to a friend during the pandemic. <laughs> money can wait. <laughs> if money can fix the problem, you don't have a you problem. Don't have a problem. <laughs> you just have a bill you have to pay. <laughs> That's tremendous. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I remember I was talking to a friend of mine, a, a very you know successful friend of mine. And he was like, this is during the pandemic. He was like, you know, do you wear a mask when you go to the grocery store or whatever? And I was like, why are you going to the grocery store? Like, you can get this shit delivered at this point. Like, it's, it's 2022 or one or whenever it was. Like, you, you, are, you are stressing about a thing that is way below your pay grade at this point. And you could eliminate a lot of that stress by automation or outsourcing or whatever. <laughs> that is so Iron Maiden of you. <laughs> <laughs> that is tremendous. Oh, yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Um, yeah. There's some validity to that, for sure. Um, there are... Uh, look. You know, if... 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 if, if There are places where, you, where I would say, if you got to... Uh, if you got courage, then stress is not the problem. If you're, if you're willing to work sure. at it, then stress is not the problem. If you... If you uh, I'm willing to forgive then stress is not the problem. Uh, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of different values that if we leaned into more, stress wouldn't become the problem. They'd become... (sighs) No, here's a great example of it, right? If you are confident in your ability uh, as an actor and you have a strong sense of your worth as a human being, why should an audition stress you out? You either get the job mm. or you don't. 
it doesn't change your value as a human being, right? Like people ask me yeah. when I go on stage, if I have stage fright and I go, not really. I mean, I know, I know, I know what I'm talking about and right. I'm never going to see these people again. The worst case scenario here is that it doesn't go well, which is not that bad of a scenario. I still get paid, you know? <laughs> I had no idea. This is some of the funniest shit I've ever heard you say. This is great. And I mean that in a very complimentary way. I hear you. Look, I, and you can tab, I know I tab this on to the end of my my list of things why I, I shouldn't be able to stress in situations like that. I always remind myself, and you're and you're going to die. Yes. yes. So, so what? Right. You know? Yes. Um, now, let me ask you this though, because I think, that I know I had to wrestle with this in my own life. And I think, and I think it's fair to say I've seen other people wrestle with this, that let's go the op. Let's look at the end, the, the reflection of that. Sure. You tell some of us at some times in our lives, Hey, don't stress about that. We say, fuck it. And like yeah. get sloppy. Sure. And irresponsible. And like, <clears throat> You know, just shit on the whole thing. And you're like, no, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, you needed some guardrails. You needed a pressure test. You needed some stress. You just, I didn't tell you to just say, fuck it. <laughs> There's a difference. Yes, yes. The, uh, the the boxer Floyd Patterson was talking about this once. He was, he was fighting uh, to defend his title against uh, Ingmar Johansson. And uh, he gets in the ring and he he goes i wasn't afraid and he's like that's why i lost mm. you know he he didn't he he was too confident he was too calm and he had ignored the very real possibility that he could lose and that this was a life a matter of life and death right you know right. you need some you need some stress uh you need gravity pulling mm. on you you know um or or yeah you become you become untethered or complacent uh if you're if if the body is just laying in bed the right. muscles atrophy right you need yeah. stress and resistance and tension to to stay at, at you know peak yeah. peak shape what is so so let's talk about some things that we stress about though that we are really just bullshit we shouldn't stress about them i sure. mean you gave a good list of, hey, I've gone out there. I know what I'm talking about. I mean, yeah. that's the worst thing that can happen, you know? And you're not going to be irresponsible with that. Mm -hmm. You're still going to prepare. You're still going to be on, try to be on point. But at the end of the day, you're like, well, what's the big deal? It could just not go well. Yeah. Um, but look at the stress we have more in the present day. And let's go back to even kids and adults. Sure. For approval. Mm-hmm. Again, quantity versus quality. I want more approval means more likes. Mm -hmm. Okay. From those, from the strangers or from the people that you, you know and you really care about. Um, I mean, right, you, what see, I you, you see that you see people dispatch and I don't, and I want to say it's not just kids. Again, I want to be clear about that because we, we do it as adults. We dispatch something into the, into the world and, and usually and even with the, the social media and the, the response defines our identity and our mood and our attitude and our approach the entire day, if not week. And That's not a, that's not a, uh, um, a, at least it's not a healthy, constructive, or even truthful thing to stress about. Yeah. Yet it is because it's rewarded because the higher number is rewarded. You sure. do get the gold medal. You do get paid if you do have more quantity wise. So... I understand where the stress is coming from, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a mirage. <laughs> no, you're right. Like I think about it as a parent, for instance, if I didn't know what other parents are doing or what other parents thought about this, 
would I care about it at all? Would I feel insecure? Would I feel like I wasn't doing a good job? Or as a writer, if I didn't know what so-and-so just sold or how much they got paid uh, or yeah. what their publisher was putting up from a marketing budget, would I be happy with what I have? Almost certainly, right? This is beyond my dreams that I ever could have uh, accomplished as a writer, especially given what I write about. So, so, so much of our stress and our insecurities, I feel like are rooted in the comparisons we're making, um, which, which we can tune out. And we, even if we can't, we should remind ourselves, Hey, maybe they're lying. <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, I think about, I think about things that have been announced about me, how many copies I've sold or how much money I made or whether I did this or that. And I go, that wasn't right. That was inflated by 20% or 30% or whatever it was. Right. Yeah. Um, and I go, okay, so when I see somebody else's thing that makes me feel insecure, let's just, uh, let's give a little haircut to it. Yeah. And it's probably closer to the ballpark of if I am going to compare myself, let's make sure we're dealing with real numbers here. Let's not, let's not compare ourselves against the idyllic Instagram image of what our friends look like, but Hey, actually they're in two weeks, they're about to get divorced. So maybe you right. don't need to feel so you don't need right. to be comparing your marriage against theirs. So, so you're not saying, Hey, there it's false math. You're just saying that's not the, that's not the math that I measure myself by. That's why that's a lie for me that we yeah. got We have to, we have to individually go, what do we value? Yes. What matters? What are, where does our what quantity meet equals quality for us? Yeah. And that is my measurement. And yeah, it's not as high of a number as over here, but that those numbers are those are not necessarily inflated for me. Though they're just alive. They're, they're, it, it's not my measurement of wealth. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and it's like, what are you trying to do? What kind of life are you having to have? I mean, I think about your idea here of a road trip. If you don't know where you're trying to go, right? Uh, your road trip is probably going to run into some problems. I'm not saying there isn't anything about figuring it out as you go and being open to spontaneous changes and whatever, but like you got to have some sense of where you're trying to get end up. End up. There's this great image. Seneca says, um, he says, happiness is having a sense of the path that you are on. And he says, not being distracted by the paths that crisscross yours, especially the footprints of those who are hopelessly lost. You know, mm -hmm. if you know where you're going, if you have a yeah. sense of the direction, you got a North star, you can just motor on your way. And some people are going to be faster than you. Some people are going to be taken off ramps uh, that, that you might wonder about, but you know, that's not what you have to be focused on. You have to go in the direction that you set out to go in. And that's tranquility and happiness and peace right there. Mm. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I've never heard that Seneca quote, but that's what I, in my travels, that's what I, a similar thing I've gotten to understand from communities and people that, from billionaires to people who didn't have electricity and tribes and third world countries, seems like whatever definition of happiness is, ha is having something to look forward mm -hmm. to, which is a, version of what yeah. you did Cynical or values stuff. having values that you are oriented around and you're you're gonna you know said it earlier you gotta have plans to be present yeah i know if i don't have something i'm looking forward to and so a, a, a place i want to get to i don't know how to be present i'm 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 anxious i'm looking over i'm like huh what'd you say you know i'm i don't know how to take a vacation you know if i, mm -hmm. if I don't if i don't have that and trust that one at a time with that big picture in mind is how I will get there. Sure. That mile marker one at a time. Yes. Will get me to the final destination, but keep that big in mind. Cause if you stare at that, you trip along the way or you run out of gas. Cause you never looked at the gauge. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. But at the same time, sure. you've got it up there. Now be down and mind tend to your business and behave and do what it is that you, you what's in front of you at the time. Um, I do like, uh, the leniency 
of the of letting yourself let and f- let magic happen and find magic with the exits off of our highway yeah. toward our sure. direction. And <clears throat> the basic sort of kindergarten way that I try to scale my perspective when I do this, it seems to 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 work better than when I don't. <clears throat> is hey, just pick out north, south, east, or west, right? Just go that direction. And, 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 and pretend you're like, your highway's got 16 lanes, bro, and you can swerve. You can get all the way over in the left lane and be doing 120 with barefoot out the window and cruise happy for you. You can swing it all the way back to the far right lane and be cruising at maybe 30 miles an hour in a, in a 70 just because you need to take some time over here and put it at 10 and 2 and get your shit together. Yeah. You know, you may even pull over and have to do a little maintenance. Got definitely have to pull off and get some refuel sometimes. And get off that feeder. Go ahead and venture off. Let your nose lead you. Let your ears take you. Hear the sound of music and follow. Go take turn that turn that corner down that where that uh, uh, that that highway exit off and turn into a two laner. Turn into a black top. Turn into a dirt road and come across a shindig that you're like, ha! Ah, look what I found. Yeah, sure. Just don't you turn. Don't, don't, right. don't, don't go, don't go back. Don't go back because you're going to get out there and go, oh, I'm far from home. Oh, I'm getting cold feet. I think I've gone far enough. No, keep going. Keep going. I think what we do, most of us, myself included, is turn back too quick. Yeah. Oh, it's that, it's that, I think I've talked to you about before that Icarus in reverse. Oh, it's getting hot. Wings are going to melt. That trigger goes off in us when it's still like 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Your wings ain't close to melting, bro. You ain't close to the sun. Go. Yeah. Keep going. Do your maintenance along the way. Trust that you're headed in the right direction. Trust in that north, south, east, or west star. And like I said, left lane 120, fine. Right lane 35, pull over, do some maintenance, refuel, take a feeder road, exit, get off to get off. But just don't turn around and, and, and pull the parachute and head on. Yeah. Or what you thought sure. was home because it's actually not home anymore. Sure. Yeah, and you got to be open. You don't know. I, I can't imagine that your plan last year involved you lobbying both parties of Congress in the light of a terrible tragedy. You know, you you helping pass very significant very significant and i think groundbreaking legislation that that hopefully will have some serious impact that that wasn't an off ramp no. that you had planned but you had the resources cuz you weren't so bogged down and you had the values to be able to go this is something i got to stop off and do yes that was not in the plan though you're right that was a reaction to life happening yeah. And having the resources to go, we're pulling out of the driveway. Let's go down there. Values, we know we need, we, we, we believe we can go down and give some value to the situation, at least to maybe hope we help stabilize some things in the chaos. And then I, um, you know, in the, in the, 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 one of the wild things with those sort of reactions in life and I and I, I wrote about this in an Esquire article back when. But and I've done it. You, you pull out the driveway, and it's you don't have a return ticket. Mm. You can't plan for that either, though. That's what's scary and awesome about those, and can be magical and devastating. It's just what it's, that's that's the risk you're taking. You're pulling out. It's a one way ticket. Yeah. And, um, that's been something that's been, you know, somewhat of a challenge and struggle for Camilla and I since, you know, that could have easily, and in some ways still could to be, become our, a, a full time sure. singular obsession, you know? Sure. Um, I tell you what, I tell you what, um, has what, what, what challenge that I did not foresee from that to revisit it. And it's probably why I won't be able to talk much longer about it here to revisit it. 
gets heavy. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. Dark and sad. Yesterday was like a tough day, especially for Camilla. Yeah. The, the anniversary. Um, yeah. Um, and to, and to, and to, we, we, we both find ourselves really measuring our words when we, when we, when they, we put a, a word out. Sure. Because it, 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 it feels sacred and like we don't want to trespass mm -hmm. don't want to speak for it's not our place you know no Ugh. anyway it's um beautiful and awesome and and, and and devastating uh but yeah that uh, uh you don't know you don't know when you when you pull out of the driveway or when you get off that that, that those feeder roads and you react to something where that's going to take you and that's part of shoot man as much as i love to prepare and i know you love to prepare that's the, the most awesome things in my life have happened with those exits. Yeah. With taking those values off the road and going, let's go find out. It's head the same direction, but let's go find out. And, uh, and, and you know what? It's, we'll, we'll do the math later. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see that we'll understand the meaning and the, and the science of this situation later because I did not prepare for it or didn't know I was preparing for it. Well, it, it was uh, beautiful and inspiring. And uh, I think at the end of your life, we talked about this at the beginning, those moments where things flash forward. I, I think it's going to mean more to you and to other people than uh, other things that you probably wanted to do and strove for. I think you're going to be, you're going to be like, wow, I was a part of that. And I, I, I think it's lovely. Mm. Well, this, this was amazing. I think the course is fantastic. Of course, I love the book and the journal also. We didn't even talk about journaling, but this was, uh, this was amazing, man. And I, I really, really appreciate it. And I hope to see you soon. Great to catch up with you. Hope to see you soon as well. Get the whole, let me get the kids down to your, your bookstore there too. Um, Come out. Appreciate yeah. it. All right, Keep man. It up. Less for more. Less, less is more. <laughs>